This video is brought to you by eToro. Now you may have seen that eToro sponsor a number of Premier League clubs. Now if you don't have time to invest, you can use eToro's copy trader feature, copy top performing investors, so when they make a trade, you make the same trade automatically at no additional cost. Then click the link in the description and get on it right now. AFTV Mo, it gets worse every week. Another defeat. A bit more fight, you know. I, I, again, a lot of, you know, at least they were attempting in the second half, but no in product, no goal from open play. And the question, you know, again, I've been asking everyone tonight is is it over for Mikel Arteta? You have to ask the question. Uh, yeah, but I answered that weeks ago for you, Robbie, didn't I? I said to you, you know, we had that conversation and we were disagreeing on how many games there were till uh, the turn of the year. I was actually right on that. I think at the time you thought it was four and I said it was five. It is five. And now there's three, it was five. And now there's three games left of that. Man City, Chelsea and Brighton. And uh, I, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even include the City one in. I'm on about the league now. Because, you know, even going and winning... Beating City in the Carabao Cup means nothing in the context of the league, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Well, anyway, the point is, even in just for on the league, I, I gave him a points target, and um, he's going to fall short of that, even if he wins the next two. So that's it for me. I feel like there's no point going into the January transfer window uh, with this current way of doing things, because why, why chuck investment after... You know, this is one of those age-old things. It's, you know, you're throwing some money at something and now you're throwing more, more at it just to minimise your losses. Losses are losses. Let's accept, accept it, take it on the chin, and we have to try something different. And look, for me, as I've said all along with Arteta, it's his decisions and, and you know, his comments and stuff that really, really concern me. Form, you can kind of say, all right, fine, there could be a turnaround. But you still have to hear the right things being said and you still have to see the right decisions being made that give you that hope and that vision that actually, yeah, this can be the basis on which you'll turn your form around. But the things that he said, every single post-match uh, interview that he does, I, I cannot believe what I'm hearing. You know, even Jamie Carragher pointed it out recently as well, where he was just saying that, you know, the he said, as an Arsenal fan, what he said after the game would worry me. The funny thing is, I'd done my interview before I heard him say that. And I thought, well, yeah, I am an Arsenal fan and it is worrying me. And then that's the post-match. And then the pre-match, that's the post-match interview. So what he's saying. But for me, again, it's the pre-match decisions as well that really compound that. And I just think to myself, you know, you're not helping yourself. As much as the narrative could be about the players, if he was making the right decisions and rewarding uh, players who have done, you know, something decent um he makes the narrative about his decisions by making the same stupid brainless decisions over and over again emil smith rowe when he's coming he's done all right he gets no time william he's played relentlessly and he's done nothing he's in every week meza Ozil, if you look at the chances created under Mikel Arteta's reign, I'm not saying Ozil's going to be the saviour. You know, people always take it to mean when you talk about Meza Ozil that mm. they always say, well, he's not going to come in and just bring us to the top of the league. I'm not claiming that. All I'm claiming... No worse. Pardon? Ain't going to be no worse. <laughs> you know I mean? He's not going to do less than William, And that's all I'm saying. Mm. In dire, dire times like this, you should at least leave the avenues open for marginal improvements because they make a big difference right now. And the fact that he's exiled certain players you know it's these decisions and it's the the comments that i just think yeah unfortunately i'm not one to try and get the acts out on managers but he simply needs to go but you know as i said it doesn't matter to me whether we do it now i said this last week whether we do it now or whether we do it after we play chelsea and city and all of that sort of stuff because it's interesting what um what happened with slav and Bilic, right they almost thought to themselves we've got city so let him have that as his last game because we'll get spanked and it will be easy. And then they go and get a result. But I think, um, look, you know, there's no point bringing you in... Don't, you don't get the impression that they do, do want a second, though. Because yeah. Because remember, I mean, if, if they were looking for opportunities to get rid of him, the Burnley defeat surely would have been the one where you say, right, come on. And even tonight, I mean, I've not really heard any sounds coming out that he could go. So... Yeah. 
And you have to wonder what they're playing at because, you know, the reality is he does, uh, He for me, he just does need to go. I don't think this is about, I mean, obviously it is about opinions, but I, I just think, come on, if you really look at what's presented in front of you, our form, not just the results, but our performances, the, the real lack of creativity we've got going forwards, the fact that we can't really even keep clean sheets, that is really, really bleak. It's unbelievably bad. A lot of people wanted Arsene Wenger out when we were fifth, and now we're 15th, and they don't want Arteta out. And that, to me, just doesn't stack up. And this is where I feel like personal agendas, personal likes and dislikes come out. You know, some people want to be proved right about what they've said. For me, it's been a strange journey, this Arteta thing, because from the offset, I'd always said, I don't want a manager to learn their trade with Arsenal. I want a proven winner with a proven track record. And then Arteta came in and did so well. And I, I, I said, well, do you know what? I admit it, I'm wrong. Because he's, I never thought he could have such an impact, but he's been brilliant. And now I'm like, instead of me thinking, no, I'm proving myself right for the first one, I view myself as being wrong twice. Because I, I accepted, actually, no, he's done really well. And now all of a sudden he's doing awful. So I just don't know anymore with him. But I feel like we need to move away from what we've said before and being proved right. And these personal agendas that a lot of fans have, the facts are there. I'm with you. I'm not with this personal, whether you're right or wrong. You know what I mean? I'm a bit like you. When he first came in and got the job, I wanted Allegri. I was like, this is a job for somebody experienced. I even thought about Ancelotti, who ironically, yeah. you know, funny enough, I was giving, doing an interview with Everton fan this morning and he said, we thought you guys would get Ancelotti. Yeah. Um, but I, I wanted somebody of experience. But like you said, um, Arteta came in, he steadied the ship, he won the FA Cup. But if we look at the league form and we take the uh, the cup form out of it, the league form has been horrendous. We finished eighth last season, which was our worst ever finish in the Premier League. And this year now, we, you know, don't even whisper it quietly. This is real now. This we is are in a relegation. Yeah. You know, we are in relegation trouble. This is relegation form. We haven't, we haven't won yeah. a game this month. You know what I mean? We, yeah. We've lost eight games this season. It's horrendous. Yeah. And Robbie, you know, if we talk conceptually as Arsenal fans, and especially some of the football and some of the good times that we've enjoyed as Arsenal fans, our standards are, are set very high. And um, we should never forget that. That's the one thing I always say. You know, it's very easy to get nose blind to underperformance or to, you know, uh, just being really, really bloody average and mediocre. We should never, ever allow that. That's when you really go into decline. So we need to ask ourselves, if we're talking conceptually, where is the line for Arsenal that is just simply not acceptable? Doesn't mean if you've been, doesn't matter if you've been here five years, five minutes, 50 years, there's got to be a line that this is just unacceptable and you need to go. And I think if we're having that conversation conceptually and not actually saying about Arteta or about this particular 2021 season, you would say, 15th in the league, X many games played, X many games lost, X many games scored, blah, blah. You'd say conceptually, yeah, obviously a manager would have to go then. So I don't know why people are struggling to get there now. This is not a vendetta. I, I'll appreciate the FA Cup uh, Arteta has won, but he does simply need to go. I really struggle to see how people are putting a case forward for time. Maybe it's a fashionable thing that people don't want to be seen to be calling for a manager's head. Um, but come on, you've got to look at the benefit of the club here. You've got to look for the greater good of the club here. As you say, this is absolute relegation form. If we lose against Chelsea, you know, and then we play Brighton, this is this is like must-win games. And I've never, ever, as an Arsenal fan, spoken about a must-win game to stop us going into the relegation zone. It's always been must-win in a positive light. Mm must win to achieve something, you know, to, to do something good, not to not do something bad. Must win to get in the top four, must win to get a Europa League place, must win to, you know, have a shot at winning the league. How oh. far are we going to let our standards fall until we say, look, enough is enough. Robbie, you tell me, uh, where do you stand on Arteta and where do you stand on the William issue? I mean, is there anything you can put forward to me to justify why William started and then justify why he was kept on after half time? I couldn't believe it. Uh, listen, my, my, you know, I, I don't normally come out and say a lot. You know that, you know, I prefer to make you guys have your say. The thing I'd say on this Arteta thing is 
I'm like you. I was really, you know, he won the FA Cup. He's a beautiful moment in a really horrible season. But this has been awful. And, and how I look on it, I know it's not all his fault because the board have not backed him properly with players and all that. But still, with the personnel that he has, we should be doing way better than this. And yeah. where I do have to fault him is that I look, he's made a lot of very big decisions. And they've all gone wrong. 100%. Right? He's made the, the decision on Ozil. Whether he would have come in and been a prime Ozil or not, it's backfired. Yeah. Gwen Doozy decision, backfired. Yeah. Saliba, backfired. Yeah. Um, Willian, backfired. <sighs> Cedric, backfired. Um, you know, today even in the game, starting Eddie and Ketter, so this all this faith being showed in Eddie and Ketter, which I really do hope this kid's going to succeed, and I think he will one day, but backfired. How can you, in a game where you're missing your best player in a Bamiyang, rely on a kid? You've got to put, even though I know he's not been firing to the proper amount this season, but that has to be surely a game where you start your big guns in Lacazette at half. Yeah. And like you said, why didn't you take off? Why are we taking off Pepe, who didn't have a great game either, but pay, taking off Pepe instead of Willian? Pepe yeah. at least is a player. If you, in a game where you need a goal, Pepe's a goal scorer. He's he's a one player apart from Aubameyang and Lacazette that you can rely on for, you know, possibly could get a goal if he's in that position. That's you, need enough. Many, you know, why, why did he bring on Willock before he brought on Lacazette and Martinelli. I mean, everything's just going wrong for him. And He's not making the right decisions, and this is the most worrying thing. If I sit there as a fan and I, look, I agree with all the decisions and I hear the right comments coming out, at least that's something. But I don't see yeah. what Peter is doing well at all. I think, if you manage, I think if you manage anything, hmm. any business, and all your decisions are wrong, yeah. are badly wrong, you're gone. And, and also, what the is that? Robbie, if you're managing uh, an institution, if you're managing people and they're all looking at you and thinking, I don't know why you're making these decisions, they do lose faith in you. And that has a massive impact on performance and morale. At least if you all feel like you're rowing in the same direction, there's, there's, that, there's that belief in the manager. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. This mm. is not... It's just not working. And, the, and I'm, worrying, I'm worried if he's lost his senior players now. I mean, I yeah. thought it was a bit strange today that Holding was captain instead of Louise. Yeah. We've heard about all the stuff been going on behind the scenes between them yeah. and with senior players. I, 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 and again, how must Lacazette be feeling to only come on for like 10 minutes in that game? And, you know, I mean, those senior players, whether they be deserve it or not, because they've also been letting him down. But you know what it's like when you're in a, you know, they're all going to be chattering and talking tonight and they're all going to be saying, yo, is this guy know what he's yeah. doing? And, you know, like you said, this is not a job for a novice. This is a club in a bad way, right? And it needs, I feel, an experienced person to guide them through. And I'm not, I think this job might have come too early for him. I really do, you know what I mean? And, um, Bobby, unfortunately, that looks like the case. And what I would say is that, a lot of people, they'll point to a lot of the external factors. Either you can just focus on the manager and what he's getting out of the players, or you can then look at loads of external factors. And let's say, for example, we were eighth in the table. I would accept someone talking about the external factors, about the board, about a season affected by COVID, no fans and, and injuries and uh, unfair red cards, whatever it might be. I could understand all of that because a lot of people say, how can Arteta legislate for what Xhaka does, for what Pepe does and all these red cards? If we were eighth, ninth, whatever, I could accept that and say, yeah, the difference between all of those things not happening and where we are now might take us to sixth, fifth, fourth, and that might be acceptable for Arteta in his, um, where he is in his managerial career. But I just want to strip out everything else and just focus on all of the factors that are in play. Instead of using them as an excuse, let's just strip them out and say, is Arteta getting enough out of the players that he's got? The answer is no. When we're 15th in the league, the answer is no. So I think another manager can come in tomorrow and from day one, from minute one, from the first second, get more out of the players than Arteta is now. And I would also say as well that I don't believe Lacazette, 
Aubameyang, Willian, all of these other players, I don't believe they are as bad as what they are performing this season. I think they could go to another club or they could go uh, under another manager and be much better. And we know that because we've seen it. So I personally think, yeah, he has lost them. He has somehow alienated them. There's something happened. And we've seen enough things in the club so far this season, you know, moles in the club and this stuff sort of getting out and enough. We've seen mm. enough stuff in the club to know that something more is going on. So I just feel as though, unfortunately, at the top level, I've said it many times before, even if you drop a couple of percent, it's enough for a big, big drop off in performance because it's very, very tight in terms of the effort <laughs> desire that you need to be putting in and maintaining results as soon as you come off the gas a little bit it all goes to pot and i think that is what we're seeing now so i would say that brighton game for me is very likely uh, should be the last game that or at that point i'm really going to be hitting the board i'm, I'm not going to be talking about arteta after that point i'm going to be saying to the board because right now i'm blaming arteta and saying he should be gone but at that point i'm going to be saying January transfer window, why have the board not made the decision? So right now, I'd say to the board, you've got a couple of weeks, get your affairs in order, sort out all the paperwork, figure out how much you're going to have to pay him to, you know, fire him, figure out who the next person is, do all of that work. You should have already been started doing that. Make sure you do it all now because that Brighton game, he needs to go. This video is brought to you by eToro. Now you may have seen that eToro sponsor a number of Premier League clubs, and you might be wondering, who are they? Well, eToro is a global investment platform with over 16 million registered users, which offers everything from stocks, currencies and commodities to cryptos like Bitcoin. Now, if you don't have time to invest, eToro is perfect. You can use eToro's copy trader feature, copy top performing investors, so when they make a trade, you make the same trade automatically at no additional cost. So if you're looking to start investing and you want to find out more about eToro, then click the link in the description and get on it right now. Robbie here from AFTV. We just got to say a big thank you to everybody who follows us across our various channels, over a million followers on YouTube. Don't forget, you can now also catch us on Reddit. We're on Reddit, so get involved with us on Reddit and also on TikTok. Keep it AFTV, baby, right here.